Stanley Thompson's design genius touched over 140 golf courses in Canada from coast to coast. He's Canada's most acclaimed architect, and he made a lot of great golf courses. But only one of his famous five calls British Columbia home. So I was uh, looking through my files, and it was uh, 1993 when I was hired at Capilano, so 28 years. Uh, that time flew by very quickly. Yeah, to be considered to uh, oversee, uh, you know, a course that is considered, a, a, you know, one of the top courses in Canada, classic, you know, one of Stanley Thompson's greatest designs, I think, uh, that was quite an honor to be associated with a club like Capilano. Just being on the property and seeing the work of Stanley Thompson, it's, it's inspiring to me. I grew up in Winnipeg playing competitive golf and loved the game and uh, 18 moved to Jasper, worked at Jasper Park Lodge, which is a Stanley Thompson course and came here in 1978 uh, and when I started, Jock McKinnon was still the head pro, so he started here in 1938, so yeah, I've been here ever since, 43 years. There's so many different points around the property where you just have to take a second and, and uh, enjoy where you are and pulls you into the present, which I think, I think uh, when we're playing any golf course, being able to switch out work and switch out the outside, outside world and yeah. when the golf course draws you into, wow, this is, this is where I should be right now. The trunk that won't stay closed. Close now. I think Canada has got, you know, more than 10 golf courses that deserve attention worldwide. We just don't tend to get as much attention on our courses, but the quality, I think, compares with anything else in the world and I've traveled quite a bit around the world. You know, Capilano probably should be in the conversation as, you know, in the top 50 courses in, in North America, and, and maybe it doesn't get that attention. Do you have, do you have any, any sense why? We haven't hosted a Canadian Open, sure. and we, we don't have the infrastructure to do that, just with, uh, with the tight property that we have here, as well as getting, you know, spectators to and from here. So I think maybe that's a factor, but um, I think it kind of is like a, a little bit of a hidden gem maybe over here on the West Coast. Yeah. I think Capilano is one of Stanley Thompson's greatest designs. Um, you know, you can't help but take in the surroundings. There are some of the views of the city. 
but when you look at the site as a whole, it, it's built on a mountainside. There's 300 feet of elevation change. And the thing that's most amazing to me is that the majority of members walk the golf course. Um, it's a very fair golf course. It's not overly punishing. If they want to set it up to be more challenging, they can do that with the pin positions on the green. Okay. Uh, so it's, you know, it's got that flexibility. That's why it's such a great golf course. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is the views, you know, the scale, uh, the scale of the trees, the width of the fairways, you know, they're in harmony. Because when you get on a, some of those properties out west and the trees are so tall, it can really throw your perspective and sense of scale off. Yep. And I think Thompson was smart in the way he cleared the land and made, you know, very wide corridors for play. And it feels in scale with the grandness of the property. And then the third thing you'll notice is the bunkering. Uh, his bunkering style was very distinctive. And, uh, you know, he had a real knack for making each hole individual. I think after you play the round, you can easily remember each hole on the golf course. And that's a special talent, special skill, I think. And Capilano is, you know, it's, it's just a great golf course and it's fun to play you know I think just just take in the routing as you play it um, and you'll see that the downhill holes you know there's more elevation change on the downhill holes but the way the course traverses back up the mountainside is brilliant yeah there's never a shot that's more than I think about 33 feet uh, you know, from tee to fairway or fairway to green. Okay. And, uh, you know, to me that is just a great routing on a very challenging property. <laughs> well, Bob Hope said in his book that golf to him is the first tee at Capilano. I found Bob Hope's ball on the first hole when he was playing here. So, Mr. Hope, here's your ball. <laughs> <laughs> There's something special about you're on the tee, but there's a garden there and there's multiple levels and you've got the view and it just feels very like, it just feels like a really special place to hit your first tee shot. Yeah. So it's... Yeah. Ball shot. And that's the story that the Guinness family, you know, bought the property and, and built the, the golf course and built the clubhouse and built the Lionsgate Bridge. So it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty interesting story from right. back in, you know, in the 20s and 30s. True, so I guess we have Guinness Beer Company to thank for <laughs> the city it, it, of North comes Van full circle and, with the Irish and Capilano and, and the and whole area here. It's all thanks to Irish stout. Well, Absolutely. we tried to get Stu to install the Guinness tap in our lunchroom, but. <laughs> nice. So yeah, they've all, done an incredible job and you see it on the golf course with uh, the tree removals, sun, more sunlight on the golf course and uh, just the technology of, uh, of turf maintenance has, has changed drastically over. When I started it was two guys on the weekend. One guy cut the greens and one guy changed the holes. Now there's 20 of us on the golf course on a Saturday or Sunday morning. So there's a big change in, in turf maintenance for sure. But it's all for the better and, and the golf course shows it when mm -hmm. you play it, yeah. Um, number four is another one, you know, the slope from back to front. If you get behind the hole on the wrong side of the hole, you know, you're gonna have a very slick Challenging putt. 167. Okay. Two, two tiers. Kind of, yeah, kind of, yeah. What do you think? I think it's got to be pretty precise. 
Can you fall off the front at all if you're uh, a bit short? That's a, that pin's a long way back. Yeah. So middle of the green, like a one, a one sixty, just over one sixty shot is good. So it'll be fine. Honestly, Ooh. that's a pretty good shot. On the top, yeah. What's your favorite hole? Probably probably number five. The view that you get across walking to the tee box, you kind of have a little sneak view uh, down the fairway towards the city, and then you get that full experience when you walk from five green to six tee. So if I had to pick, I'll probably pick number five right now. I think the green is, um, the green is so undulating and uh, is definitely one of my favorite, my favorite greens for sure. long of the green on five. He's got to play it long of this pin. Hits the ball mark. It's the only way to try to get close. So at, at what point would you have met uh, Robbie and let, let's talk a little bit about like the Stanley Thompson influence to Robbie. Sure. I mean, the world of golf course architecture is so hereditary almost uh, it is so I'm, I'm curious just to get a sense of how you met Robbie in the first yeah, place. yeah I met Robbie uh, well I actually went to work with Tom McBroom and uh, he was doing some work for Robbie at that time and that's where I met Robbie you know and that relationship developed and we eventually uh, partnered up and until he passed away in uh, 1989 so you guys were together for how long uh, it was about eight years. Uh, Robbie always used to drill it into my head. He says, remember the average guy has got to get around the golf course too. And, uh, that was one of the most important things I think Robbie taught me and it was really a philosophy of Stanley Thompson's as well. Yep. You know, to find that balance where you can challenge uh, the very skilled golfer but still leave enough room for the average golfer to get around the golf course. And when you had to hit a shot, it was obvious, like, you should be hitting a cut here. Yeah. It will help you out. You should be hitting a draw here. It's going to help you out. Like, Except on eight, you should not be hitting a draw into that green. Right. And it, and it looks like you shot. should, on the second mm -hmm. shot, and it looks like you should hit a draw into that green. Yes. Yeah. Because the draw takes you way right left. To takes you way yeah. left. Yeah. 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 That's such a cool approach shot. By this point in the round, I'm already in love with this place. It's so rare that a course can make you feel frustrated and invigorated all at the same time. But I guess that just shows how brilliantly fair the design is. The ascent back up the mountain continues on the incredible 10th my pick for the most challenging par four on the course. The narrow tree-lined fairway and greenside fall off make it a beast to deal with. Thankfully, the setting, mountain views, and a well-placed halfway house help remind you that golf is about more than just your score. Probably the most challenging green would be number 12. 
you know there's a lot of um, back to front slope on the 12th green and something we've kind of worked on over the years to reduce some of the severity just through top dressing a little heavier on the front of the green to because uh, there were some pin positions that were unusable there mm -hmm. but some very interesting subtle uh, contours and breaks there's a lot of interest in in all the greens there and there are a few that are very uh, challenging Mark said it was perfect. He was like, that is a perfect shot. I mean, I was five yards from him, so he thought it was <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's the one we caught him on film saying. That's about perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. After, after he hits all After he hits all yeah, That was so good. good. And then Pat me played one. A low burner went over the green and then I Hop, hops up the hill. Up the hill. Yeah. And then Mark was just like, you have to land it here and it has to bounce to here and then it has to have no speed and trick on the green here. Okay. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. Then I oh. It would have went off, it would have went 100 yards down, but they kept the grass long. Yeah. But it sure. could have went easily over the green, it rolled off, and I thought it was gone, and then it just stopped in the fairway. That's as much fun as it is to visit places like Long Beach and to see what they can do with a grounds crew of two or three, it's equally impressive to see a team of 20 or more run like a wild oiled machine. Clearly, the members here prefer a firm, fast, and pristine course, and Stu's world-class crew delivers. What makes 15 at cap just so great? Oh, the shape of it, the dog leg, the way it turns and sets up for a draw. It's a really special hole and it's really where the teeth of the golf course starts. Last four holes, you've got a good score going, you've got to hold on, and uh, par in from here is always good. What a shot. As Mark mentioned, no score is safe from Stanley's final exam. These holes speak for themselves in a sense. It's all out in front of you. You just need to execute, plain and simple. Earlier this season I made the point that courses like Capilano, Sagebrush, and Victoria are difficult to compare to each other because of how different they are. At the same time though, I can see similar themes and executions between Sagebrush and Bandon, or Cabot, and between Victoria and some of the courses of the Monterey Peninsula. But where the game of comparisons ends for me is with Capilano. What other courses can match the combination of firm and fast conditions, wildly sloped greens, iconic Stanley bunkers and mounds, impressive hole variety, 
In a mountainside routing with 300 feet of elevation change that's an easy walk for most, has anyone matched the madness in Stan's genius? Will anyone? I'd love to find out. Until then, for me, Capilano stands alone. blend of interesting greens you know 18 is I think the biggest green on the golf course and you know depending on where the pins placed it can play very differently you know with the pin at the front as opposed to a pin at the back of the green I'm noticing a trend on 18 everyone's just sitting right before the bunkers it's probably the play I thought I hit a dart. Um, Mark told me exactly what to do. And I executed. <laughs> I made six. The I, I said, what do I do? I couldn't see anything. He's like, aim to the tall trees. They're just the right edge. And he said, 260 max. He goes, what goes 260? I said, both my three wood and my two iron go 260. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, which would you prefer to hit here? I was like, probably two iron. Like, okay. That's a great follow up question. Yeah, hit he's two like, iron at the right tree line. Why did you get yourself that way? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. Also, <laughs> Pretty good, eh? Nice shot. There's only one Canadian PGA Tour event ever, like each year. Each year. Unless we bring back the Air Canada Championship. Right. So, like, if you think about all of the here. courses in that, that host PGA events in the US, and, and by virtue of that, like, I've heard of you know, TPC Scottsdale because yeah. of the waste management and, you know, Muirfield Village for hosting stuff. Like, like obviously there's many more, but imagine like all the great Canadian golf courses that people would know about if there was more exposure yeah. in the media, on right. TV. grew up in an Elion Temple. Luke Donald's brother was a club pro nearby, and uh, so I kind of had a little introduction. So I got a chance to go and meet him. I grew up playing junior golf. I was all at the bottom of the field. He was at the top, and he just came over. We were chatting, and he said, "I hope your members realize how special this place is. Because this is unbelievable." So yeah, the members are very proud of it. As are we, all the staff that work here. With a golf course like this, designed to this caliber, on a property like this with these views, we want to ensure that we are preserving Stanley Thompson's original vision. And you have to have the resources to do that. We're fortunate here at the club that the caliber of the membership matches the caliber of the golf course. The membership here supports the entire team at the club, and that's with our daily operations but also with the larger capital property improvement projects. And I think all of that together is what is special about Capilano. You know, as for the, the 
fun times on a golf course. Definitely in the 70s and 80s, it, it, there's a lot of Caddyshack moments on the golf course. So we, we definitely had a lot of fun. <laughs>